What's going on guys? It's CTA Prime back here again. This is part three in a three-part series that's been ongoing for the last week. If you haven't seen part one or two, I'll leave links in the description. As it sits right now, it's still a $350 gaming PC until we add a dedicated GPU. In part two, I asked my viewers if they wanted to see a 1660, a 590, or a GTX 1060. A majority of the people chose the 1660 basically because this is probably the best budget card right now if you're buying new parts. If you want to buy something used, yes, you can get something cheaper like a 580 or even a 1060, but I think the 1660 is awesome for the price, and if you want to buy new, this is the card I would have chose. This is the Asus 1660 Phoenix. This is the smaller version with a single fan. Now, if you're going to buy something for a big case like this, I do recommend getting something with a bigger cooler and dual fans. This thing does get a bit toasty, but I picked up the smaller card because this card's actually going to be going in a mini ITX build that I have coming up in the next week. The 1660 has 6GB of 192-bit GDDR5 RAM, a core clock of 1530MHz, boost clock of 1830, and 1408 CUDA cores. I believe this card is perfect for 1080p 60fps gaming on this machine. But like I mentioned, I would get a dual fan model. If you're using a case this big, you have plenty of room for it. I will leave links in the description to Amazon and Newegg. Before we get started here, I just want to give you a quick refresher on the specs in case you didn't watch part 1 and 2. For the CPU, I'm using the Ryzen 3 2200G. This is a quad-core CPU with a base clock of 3.5 GHz and a boost clock of 3.7. For the motherboard, I'm using a Gigabyte B450M DS3H. For the RAM, I chose Corsair LPX. This is 8 GB, two 4 GB modules at 3000 MHz, a 240 GB Kingston SSD. For the case, I'm using the Thermaltake H17. This doesn't have any tempered glass or acrylic on it. And finally, the power supply, a Thermaltake Smart 500 Watt. I did a full build guide on this system. I'll leave a link in the description to that. I just went ahead and installed the video card real quick. It's really simple to do this. You're just going to use one 8-pin connector from your power supply. So when I initially announced that I was going to throw a 1660 in here, I had a few people mention that the CPU is going to be a bottleneck. And yes, in some CPU-intensive games, the CPU will bottleneck this GPU. Now that doesn't mean we're not going to see an improvement in GPU performance, it just means that the CPU is going to limit this GPU. We could get better frame rates with a better CPU in this system. And one of the best things about doing a build like this is starting out cheap. The 2200G that I'm using in here is a $99 quad-core CPU. You could always upgrade this to a 6-core 2600 or even the 8-core 2700. And that's one of the big reasons I chose this graphics card, because later on down the road, you can upgrade this CPU and make it perform even better. If I was to go out and buy a used RX 570 on eBay and put it in this system, it would perform pretty decently. But later on down the road, I'd still have to upgrade this GPU to get anywhere near the 1660 performance. So personally, I'd rather spend a little more on the GPU now and then upgrade the CPU later on down the road. With all that out of the way, let's get into a little bit of testing. Now this is an awesome 1080p 60fps machine. So what we have here is Far Cry 5 and I'm just staring at a barrel. I want you to take a look at the GPU temperature and usage up in the top left hand corner. I have Afterburner running here. I have VSync completely off. If you're using a regular computer monitor that's 60Hz, just turn VSync on. Now in all of these tests you're about to see, I won't have VSync on because I want to see how far we can push this machine. But basically what I'm doing now is wasting this GPU power. I really don't need it because this is plugged into a 60 Hertz monitor and I'm only going to be able to see at 60 FPS on this monitor. The GPU is being utilized around 76% and we just hit 80 degrees Celsius. I told you this thing gets toasty, definitely get you a dual fan card. Or change your fan curves. What I'm going to do now is turn VSync on and I'm going to lock it at 60. So this is only going to run at 60 FPS. That GPU temperature is going to drop way down because we don't need that much power to run this at 60. You're going to see that GPU temperature drop way down. Now it's going to stay around I think 63 degrees Celsius, which is much better than 80 degrees. And this is due to the GPU clock being dropped down because we don't need any more than this to run it at 60 FPS. Now this can also help out with CPU usage. I've seen some games drop down from 100% to 60% just locking it at 60 or turning VSync on. So I really do recommend that with a build like this. Now if you have a 144Hz monitor, 
you're going to want to build something that's much more powerful than this to run every game at 144 hertz. The next thing I want to talk about is overclocking the CPU. So on the left hand side we have the stock clocks 3.5 base, 3.7 boost. On the right hand side I've overclocked all four cores the 3.9 gigahertz. This is the built in Far Cry 5 benchmark and I ran this three times each and every time with the overclock I got a better score. So yes, overclocking the CPU can definitely help. Some games are going to benefit a lot more than Far Cry 5 did, but on our average we gained 5 FPS just by taking the CPU to 3.9 GHz. Every single game you're about to see in this video is at the stock CPU clocks and the stock GPU clocks. Yes, there is performance that can be had, but I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Some people just want plug and play parts. The first game I tested was Apex Legends. Afterburner is running up in the top left hand corner. We can see the GPU usage, CPU usage, FPS, minimum, average, and maximum. With each one of these tests, you'll also see the name of the game and the settings that were used on screen. So this is Apex Legends 1080p max with no MSAA. With this single fan GPU, yeah. we hit around 85 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot in my opinion, but I wanted to let it go and just see what it did here. You can always change the fan curve or just turn V-Sync on. It's going to stay much cooler. I got a bunch of games to show you guys. I'm going to stop talking now for a little while, but I'll be back at the end of the video. I'll start with you. Yeah, yeah. Delivering care package. Oh, sorry, oh, I'm coming.
You might have noticed that I was running most of those games at 1080p high settings. I did have a couple in there like Doom that was on Ultra and I think Dota 2 was also on the maximum it could go. Here's a little list of some other games that I tested, but instead of using high settings, I just set it to Ultra. This is 1080p Ultra, the average FPS for each one of these games. Everything's looking really good until we get down to Metro Exodus and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. As for PUBG, just turn a couple of the settings down to high and you'll be good to go. But these games really struggled at ultra settings, and it comes down to CPU power with these two games. So I wanted to test it out, and I paired the 1660 with my i5-9600K, I just left it at stock clocks. Metro Exodus, I averaged 54 FPS, and for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I averaged 51 FPS. Same exact settings, just a better CPU. So the 2200G is bottlenecking the 1660 in some very CPU intensive games, but this doesn't mean we can't get smooth frame rates in Assassin's Creed or Metro Exodus. This was ultra settings. You can turn a bunch of the stuff down and get a really playable experience with both of these games. Overall, I'm actually really impressed with this setup here. This little $99 CPU is really trucking in these games, and it does really great 1080p high settings for most of the stuff I tested out. I'd say that the RX 590 is going to perform on par with what we just saw here. I think a great build would be a 2600 with this 1660, but if you don't have that extra cash to spend, you can always start out with this 2200G. It definitely does a decent job now. One of the main reasons I started with the 2200G is so you could be up and playing right out of the box. This has the built-in Vega 8 graphics. It does pretty decent at 720p, but as things progress, people are gonna want more and more, and that's why I went ahead and added this GPU now instead of a different CPU. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to check out part one and two. Links are in the description. And a few weeks before I built this, I did a $850 build with a 2600 and an RTX 2060 that'll definitely outperform this, but it's much more expensive. If you want to check that video out, I'll leave a link down below for that as well. Links for all the parts that I used are also in the description. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.